Over the years, e-bikes have gained massive popularity across the world. And why wouldn't they? E-bikes are the perfect middle ground between motorbikes and bicycles. They don't contribute to carbon emissions, they are technologically advanced, they allow you to choose whether you want to pedal or use its electric motor during commutes. They are extremely versatile and nimble, they are comparatively much more portable than traditional motorbikes, and the list goes on. There is no denying that e-bikes are the natural evolution of bicycles and as they've become a lot more affordable, more people will jump into the bandwagon. However, one interesting area where e-bikes are slowly gaining a lot of traction is in the military. In the recent conflict between Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine has been utilizing e-bikes on the battlefield with great success. Mobility is a very essential aspect of combat, and the Ukrainian army is well aware of it. They have incorporated lightweight electric enduro bikes into their fleet along with traditional jeeps, trucks, and other heavy-duty vehicles. So why is the Ukrainian army adopting this new form of transportation into their numbers? And do e-bikes actually have a place in a war? Let's find out. Traditional military vehicles like jeeps and trucks are big, noisy, and can be detected from miles away. Although these vehicles have been used on the front lines for decades, they have always been somewhat of a nuisance on the battlefield. This is where electric vehicles come in, or more specifically, e-bikes. These bikes are a lot smaller and make practically no sound. This aspect of e-bikes makes them a lot more stealthy, which is imperative in the heat of battle. In the case of Ukraine, they have partnered with the e-bike manufacturer Delfast to produce custom bikes that are capable of carrying rockets and anti-armor weapons. With this combination of enhanced mobility and firepower, a single Ukrainian operator is now capable of destroying an enemy tank all by themselves. Similarly, combatants know how difficult it is to get into a position where they can successfully launch a rocket as they are left exposed once they fire. E-bikes solve this problem as the operator can quickly exit the scene at any time. Another great use case for e-bikes is in scouting, recon, and surveillance. Surveying enemy territory using armored transports can give away the position of the scouts. Whereas using motorbikes makes a lot more sense, but their loud exhausts lead to the same problem. That is why the Australian Department of Defense have been field testing e-bikes to see how well they work in simulated situations. According to Corporal Thomas Ove of the Queensland Mounted Infantry, military personnel are able to cover a lot more ground much faster while also saving time as they don't have to wait around for troops to mobilize when they find essential pieces of intelligence. These e-bikes have a top speed of 55 miles per hour and can cover a distance of 62 miles on a single charge. That means for scouting runs, these bikes can cover 30 miles in approximately half an hour. As you can see from the previous section, there are plenty of ways e-bikes can be utilized in a combat zone. However, just like every other form of transportation, e-bikes also come with their own set of challenges. Regardless of where you are using an e-bike, one of the most common problems with them is that their batteries don't last too long. Battery technology has not advanced far enough to warrant all-day ride on a single charge. However, this should not be much of an issue as e-bikes can be used like regular bikes even if their battery runs out. And with some proper planning and training, this issue may never even arise. Speaking of battery, there is another issue that needs to be considered. E-bikes need a long time to charge, approximately 4 to 6 hours to be exact. Unlike the previous problem, this cannot be overlooked. Keeping an e-bike on its charging station for almost a fourth of a day is not a favorable situation. Military troops are expected to be deployed at a moment's notice. So, unless there are multiple bikes available for each person, which can be quite costly due to the extravagant prices of these two wheelers, using an e-bike is not very viable. Unlike traditional bicycles, e-bikes are substantially heavier in comparison. This is primarily due to the battery units that are installed in these bikes. Having to carry more weight than necessary in a war zone can significantly impact the mobility of the troops. On the other hand, an argument can be made that these bikes can be easily transported using vehicles, but that defeats the whole purpose of being discreet. So, 
either the bike needs to be manually carried, which can slow people down, or be transported using large vehicles, which can potentially alert the enemy. Maintenance can also be a significant factor to consider. The process of maintaining or repairing an e-bike in the middle of a gunfight can be extremely stressful. Plus, it is not always possible to repair an e-bike on the go. Some common issues include the motor dying out, electronic components malfunctioning, sensors not working properly, etc. You don't have to deal with these kinds of problems when using a regular road bike as they are much simpler to repair. Unfortunately, there is no clear-cut answer to this question yet. There are still quite a few variables to consider before e-bikes can be properly deployed. But on the bright side, there is a very real possibility that e-bikes can be used in the field of modern warfare very soon. Of all the challenges that have been listed, most of them are not significant enough to rule out the use of an e-bike. For instance, although these bikes can be quite heavy to carry around, manufacturers are taking active steps to solve this problem by incorporating lightweight lithium-ion batteries and using lighter materials like carbon fiber to build them. Overall, e-bikes can be a great asset for the military in terms of stealth and mobility.